Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go ahead and start a couple minutes early because everyone showed up on time today. So good job. Start out on time and early. Well, thanks for taking the time to attend our annual State of the Education Luncheon presented by Northside Hospital. Uh, this can be viewed on FYNTV.com. It will be live streamed. We're also going to have it available afterwards on that website as well as the Chamber's social media platforms. The Dahlonega Lumpkin County Chamber of Commerce mission is to increase prosperity, attract visitors, advocate for all businesses, and develop leaders to promote the welfare of our community. We advocate for all businesses through our Government Affairs Committee, chaired by Chuck Jones, that organizes events such as State of the State, State of the City and County, the Lonega Lumpkin County Day at the Capitol, State of Economic Development, and candidate forums. Our programs and events aren't possible without the support of our sponsors, partners, and volunteers. Our presenting sponsor is Northside Hospital. Our gold sponsor is Truist Bank. And our bronze sponsor is the University of North Georgia. If you're interested in sponsoring a future chamber event, please ask one of the chamber staff for more information. I'm going to introduce Chuck Jones. Chuck serves as our Government Affairs Committee Chair. And uh, Chuck has an extensive biography, but I'm going to shorten it down a little bit because that's what he told me to do, and I always listen to him. Chuck leads dealer financial services for Truist Bank. In his role, he oversees indirect lending for auto dealers. And listen to all that he does in this community. He serves on the board of the chamber, on the water and sewage authority, chairman of the development authority, and several community organizations, including the Lumpkin County Audit Committee, the College and Career Advisory Council for Lumpkin County School Systems, and the Finance Committee at Dahlonega United Methodist Church. So Chuck is super committed to our community, and he's, a, he's a, one of our favorite board members. Chuck and his wife, Debbie, have sponsored 202 college scholarships for students in need. They live in Dahlonega with, uh, with their Lakeland Terry, Terrier, Atticus Finch. They have one daughter, Lauren, who is 36. And Chuck's going to be introducing all our speakers today. Chuck? This is probably one of my favorite events. I believe education is really the key to success in life, and it gives you opportunities that you never dream about when you're, going, when you're growing up. One of the great things about Lumpkin County in North Georgia is we have, and I'm gonna put them on the spot a little bit, I think the most distinguished leaders, both in our high school, our mountain education, the University of North Georgia, and Lanier Tech. I think they're phenomenal, and I'd like to give them a round of applause before we start. <laughs> I always like to introduce Benita first. I met Benita the first time, and she started ragging on me about our two universities, which are rivals back in Texas. She's a native Texan like I am, but her memory of how our schools play each other is totally distorted and wrong. <laughs> but she is a very accomplished leader, and I think she's the best college president in the United States and probably in the world. So with that, I'm going to get out of the way and let her talk. So I normally would say go lumberjacks, but I guess I have to say go bearcats after that. So here we go. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today, and uh, yeah, I want to give you a, a fairly brief update about University of North Georgia, and I will cut to the chase and tell you we're doing, we're doing well. So let me give you a few of the highlights from that. Okay. All right, so there's our beautiful campus. I know there are always a lot of questions about enrollment, and right now it's predicted that about half of the USG schools will be going down in enrollment this year fairly significantly. We're going to be doing, we're going to be doing well. Of course, the jury's all out till everybody gets here. We have, of course, five campuses, and if you're a newbie, I'll tell you right quick how that happened. Uh, I had been at North Georgia College for six months and then learned we would be consolidating with Gainesville State College, both of which were very strong institutions. Gainesville had a satellite campus in Watkinsville, which we call our Oconee campus. And we were scheduled to open up a, a satellite campus together in coming, 
which was Campus 4. And since then, we've received the only new uh, campus that I, I know, I've, there may be a couple of small ones, but really standalone campus in Georgia since then when we opened the Blue Ridge campus. So with, um, with five campuses, we're right at 20,000 students. We're now um, bringing in students from almost every county in Georgia. It's 150 Georgia counties. I think there are only 159. So we're also bringing in students from out of state, usually between 45 and all 50 states. So our reach is expanded. We are a high demand institution. So that gives us the opportunity to recruit students who are going to survive and graduate. I do not have interest in, um, I do not have interest in just bringing students in to have them leave. The revolving door is not what we're about. We're about graduating the students. Uh, average SAT is 1130. Average high school grade point average 3.55. So you can see from that we're attracting very strong students. We focus a lot on uh, building character and helping students to grow up and be responsible. And I know that's music to every parent's ears in the room today. But we're, uh, the fact that we are a senior military college helps a lot. And my doctorate's from Texas A&M. They're also a senior military college. And I can tell you it affects the culture. When it's a sin to walk across the drill field, we're setting the standards pretty high. Our enrollment trends, you'll see on there that we're doing well. We had a little uh, leveling out as, as COVID hit, but nothing that we're incredibly alarmed about. One of the issues that I, that I actually suggested we start fairly soon after I came was let's start coaching these kids for nationally competitive scholarships. When you have that kind of pseudo body, they're eligible for Fulbrights, Borens, Gilmans, Jack Kent Cooks, Goldwaters, Trumans, and they have succeeded. We are for the fourth year uh, a, the, uh, a high producing, top producer of Fulbrights. Uh, this year, there are three in the state that are top producers, Emory, University of Georgia, and University of North Georgia. We're keeping good company. We have, of course, we teach 12 languages. We're very big on cyber, and that, of course, is, is uh, very attractive to many of these. So you'll see that we have, um, we have now our uh, fourth uh, on, in the corner is the NSF's award to receive $138,000 for research to go to graduate school. That is the fourth one we have received. Now, you don't get a Fulbright by writing a, a, an essay. So our faculty and staff mentor them, prepare them. And when I talk with, with the, the receiving institutions abroad, they're like, send us more of these. So we're very, very, very proud of our students. And as I mentioned, Gilman's Borens, the BCA Scholarship, Jack Kent Cook. Uh, we have two critical language scholarships and three alternates. So all of those, we're teaching Mandarin, we're teaching, um, we're teaching Mandarin, we're teaching Korean, we're teaching Japanese, Arabic. Um, so you know these students are highly, highly, highly competitive. I mentioned the Corps of Cadets. They're having a good run. And um, this spring, we, we've commissioned 50 commissions, 40 regular army. We'll commission, we'll make our, um, our quota with 100 officers for the sixth year in a row. And we are all army. We are the only one of the six senior military colleges that is all army. And we compete every year for Ranger Challenge. And you know what an Army Ranger is. You know what a Navy SEAL is. So we put these cadets through that kind of grueling uh, competition. And we won again uh, for the third time in four years. At the third straight ROTC title in the International Sandhurst. Sandhurst is actually in England, but we compete at West Point. We were, again, the number one senior military college in the nation and the number one ROTC program in the nation in that competition. 
We have, of course, been, um, we are number four uh, public university in the southeast among, um, and only, uh, and second among 11 USG schools to be named best of vets. And this is an area we, we have to do more work in. We have a lot of veterans coming back and needing to finish degrees, and we just, we're working to make sure that we let them know what we have to offer. We have our first PhD program coming this year. Uh, we've had several doctorates, but this is our first actual PhD. A lot of it will be online. It's in criminal justice, which is one of our fastest growing majors. It will appeal to uh, military, non-military, and um, will allow uh, it will allow a lot of open a lot of doors for people to move into um, other areas. Our Institute for Cyber Operations received a million and a half this year from the from the Department of Defense, and we will receive another four million dollars in 22-23. Four four million, yes. So cyber is um, cyber is incredibly in demand right now, and I saw the numbers of how many vacancies there are right now in Georgia. I don't have those top of mind, but it was staggering how many jobs are open that require knowledge of cyber. And like I said, you'd pair that with with language, and you you've got something really great. One of the things that that we're excited about is the Institute of Healthy Aging. We have a very strong gerontology program, particularly on the Gainesville campus, and they have a grant program, and they're educating and preparing graduates to work in that area. And we have expanded our articulation agreement with Lanier Tech, and we are super excited about that, and you will hear soon um, Lanier Tech, of course, all of the campuses have our respect, but Lanier Tech is, is kind of special in what they're doing. So I, I've set you up nicely. You owe me. Um, <laughs> athletics has been ha also had a good year. Our softball team went to the World Series against the national championship. Unfortunately, our top home run, home run hitter what tested positive, and we did not have her there. So I think that may have made the difference. We still had a good run and made it made it through the 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 different brackets, but were, did not persevere. So we want that trophy again for that. Um, we had uh, Journey Gurley. You'll see there won the national pole vaulting championships, and we had. Um, a number of our teams to do post-conference play. Baseball was doing well, tennis, track and field, cross country. Um, so we're very proud of those, and, and we are extremely proud of our new facilities. If you haven't joined us for a game, it's, it's worth the, the trip. Uh, our, our softball facility was named the best in the country in D2, and we have turf on there. Somehow in this uh, terrain, potholes tend to form if we don't have some turf there. So encourage you to come by, but um, don't do what the mayor did, to show up in our arena with a hat on to a, for another institution. My goodness, Sam. So he, we had to ban him, but we're, we've lifted that ban. He gets to come back now. We have, we routinely, <laughs> sorry about that, we routinely um, come out ahead in the conference on the Make-A-Wish. Part of what we need to do is to help our students understand the importance of service leadership, and they raise money for the Make-A-Wish. We've had several Make-A-Wish kids where they, we come and celebrate. If that doesn't bring tears to your eyes when they're there, it, it, nothing will. And. Um, They've been the top for five years in a row, and they've even been in the top nationally. Uh, we've renamed the PBC Make-A-Wish. has been renamed for Leanne Noble, one of our softball players who uh, died from uh, died very young in a very sudden death. So we keep her in our memory. You've seen that building go up over on... Um, that 
Chastity, I guess, Main Street, but it, where is that where the business building is? What? Chastity, yeah. Okay, so I was told that, that people assumed that was a football field. It is not. That is our new MicroTrail uh, Center for Business Innovation and Technology. It has all of the latest gadgets for cyber, for, uh, it, you know, whether you're interested in, in management, marketing, the stock market, any of those areas, and it will be absolutely phenomenal. So we had uh, signed the beams yesterday, and so we'll have that up and, and going soon, I hope. <laughs> We've had some, some very wonderful ribbon cuttings you probably know we were given a new campus in Blue Ridge that we opened last year, or the year before, I think, two years ago. And uh, before that, we were renting a facility. We had two or three classrooms. People were right on top of each other. And so now we have our own building, and um, Speaker Ralston was there, and Senator Gooch, and we, um, we're very proud of that building, and it's built where we can expand. And when you look at our region, and you understand that before that, in that part of our state, they had only, they had limited choices, um, mostly private colleges up there. So this is a, a game changer, and you've heard me say, companies and small businesses don't come if there's not a workforce. So we have a lot of people who want to live and work in North Georgia, and we're trying to make that available to them. Um, the intramural fields we have new up on the hill, and uh, they had to. We have put some fencing around it so the balls don't go over. Um, we have a new observatory that I hope you get a chance to see, and uh, it is it's phenomenal and I have two small grandchildren who were visiting and we were able to catch it one night. They were on cloud nine. It's really, really phenomenal. The Gainesville campus expansion, we inherited the Lanier Tech, formerly owned the Lanier Tech property, which is adjacent to the Gainesville property. There's a through street between them and we have renovated those and they are absolutely beautiful. We're um, adding a number of things over there that, that we just didn't have space for, but we will have all of our simulators there for nursing. Our nursing is growing substantially. We are full classroom this fall. We'll see how that goes. We have learned to be agile and nimble, and we will deal with the COVID with whatever happens. We are encouraging vaccinations. We're not allowed to require it. We can... Um, we, ha we can strongly encourage masks, and at this point, we're not allowed to mandate it. And that causes me some concern, uh, but we, we are helping to educate. And for students, what we're doing is asking faculty, staff, and students, I'm not a doctor. I can't tell you what to do. Check with a healthcare professional. And hopefully, that's all I'm asking. Hopefully, they will do that. But. We're working on, on building that community. Residence Hall move-in has started. We have nine residence halls. We have, um, we have one of our residence halls has about uh, four, how many are down? 400 beds, I think, are being renovated. So that's down a little bit, but we're, we're filling them up. Okay, I hope I've stayed within my limit. Are there any questions? Come on, no questions. Rebuttals? Yes? We have thrown that back and forth, and we think there's a huge need for that. Um, We've had to, we're not, it's, it's only practical that we can add so many new programs at a time and we're prioritizing what is our greatest demand areas. I think it's coming, we're not there yet. We need it, we need it. Okay, thank you very much, I appreciate it.
one of the things that I've really enjoyed about being in North Georgia is to learn about Lanier Technical College. Your, your staff is out everywhere. They're in all the events. They've supported the career in College Academy at the high school. And uh, I'm proud to say, and I'll tell you now, because I, they probably haven't told you, Debbie and I are going to do a scholarship for, for you all for the first time. So you all have done a great job. I'd like to introduce Tim McDonald. He's the president. He also taught for 25 years, and he's been with the uh, Technical College for 37. So with that, I'll turn it over. Thank you. Click it. Army Ranger right there. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you all so much. Uh, Dr. Jacobs certainly enjoyed that. So I'm going to take that, that cue up and I'm going to visit that in a few minutes. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll bring that full circle. So it's my great honor to be here today again, Tim McDonald, Lanier Technical College. I want to start out with just some facts and figures. We've been around uh, uh, for 55, 56 years. Uh, Founded in 64, first graduating class in 66. What makes us a little different than the University System of Georgia schools? We are part of 22 uh, technical college system and we're actually governed by the executive branch of the state. So and when you think about the technical college system of Georgia, think about an economic development department that's focused on workforce development out of the governor's office. And that's who we are and that's what we do. And our 22 colleges are uh, spread out across the state. We handle uh, an area here in Northeast Georgia. That's our, our focus. Uh, Lumpkin County is part of that. And our mission is to provide workforce development. And with that, I'll move on. There's our mission statement, 72 words. We won't read 72 words. <laughs> Two words will take care of that, workforce development, and that's since 1964. That was our founding mission, and the mission has not changed since 1964. We've had programs uh, over the years. We, uh, we had uh, some of poultry classes. We had uh, uh, home appliances. We've had other programs over the years. As that technology goes away, Lanier Tech will... Uh, so just close those programs and we open new programs and we'll look at some of those that we've opened recently. And the way we do workforce development is threefold. We've got our academic programs. That's the standard college courses that you might think are our program courses that uh, you could think of from accounting to welding. So in anywhere in between to include 27, 28 uh, general education classes that transfer directly to the University System of Georgia. So that's the traditional way that folks view us, but we also have two other areas that we focus on, and that's our adult education. That's for those students, people, citizens, who for some reason did not uh, obtain their high school credential. Life got in the way, just whatever the situation is, that is one of our focus areas. I do want to point to Jennifer Parker. If you don't know Jennifer Parker, raise your hand, Jennifer Parker, stand up. She is our instructor here in Lumpkin County and Dawson County for our adult ed. And that's providing an opportunity for those folks who do not have that high school equivalency uh, credential, an opportunity to earn that and get into the workforce, get into higher education. Lanier Tech, for the most part, all of our courses, all of our programs require that high school credential, very similar at the University System of uh, uh, Georgia. So just a key component to what we, we do at the, uh, at the technical college level. The other area is economic development. That's our continuing ed customized training. We have Vice President Carl Rogers here, worst kind of reform politician. <laughs> he thinks he is, but he's nowhere near being reformed. So, yes, sir. A few statistics, and then I want to get into student stories. So uh, our enrollment, we have actually seen the reverse of the trend. The last several years, the trend for colleges, community colleges, the trend in enrollment has been decreasing. Well, at Lanier Technical College, our trend is, is increasing. We're inching up. Last fall, we set a record, all-time record, of over 5,000 students. 
Uh, and that, that is large for Lanier Technical College. And this fall, we're sitting at 5,182 students, which would be an, another all-time record, except we've got drop ad and some purge for non-payment. So we'll know by the end of next week if we've set another record. But we're very, very poised to be right in there. We don't think last fall was an anomaly for us. And, and I guess you asked the question, what has changed? Well, obviously, we've seen population growth in our area. We've added some additional programs, but I think there's a little paradigm shift in that maybe the traditional route into the university system, and Dr. Jacobs is a great ally, great supporter. This is not a knock on our university system, it's just where our economy is, and, uh, and we're going to provide them a pathway to flow through Lanier Tech and get to UNG, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But I think there's a little paradigm shift going on that you know, having a skills-based education in the beginning, get that uh, employment immediately, and then continue to work on your advanced education. And the reason I say that, if you look at our job placement rate, so just our simple job placement rate, some of the numbers we're still gathering. Uh, and for job placement, it takes a little over a year to, to finalize that data. But you can see that we're 100%, 100%, 99.1%. And that's the rate of folks who leave Lanier Tech and they either continue their education or they, they gain employment or gain employment with one year of graduating from Lanier Tech. And that's in any area. And those are just fantastic numbers. But the one we're most proud of is the job placement rate in field, 100%, 89.9%. This year, we're looking at potentially uh, 90 plus. So we, we average right around 90% job placement rate in field, and, and that is huge. That means if a student comes to us to learn something in an allied health field, they're gonna gain employment in allied health. If they come to us for something in engineering, they're getting a job in engineering. Welders who come take our class, they're getting a job in their field of study. And all of our programs, remember, are designed to satisfy or meet the needs of our local community here. So, so that's statistics, but I wanna get into some, some student stories. And one of the things that we really focus on at Lanier Tech is beating a student where that student is in their life. So I wanna give some examples of how we do that. This is Mitch Beku. He was actually uh, selected as our outstanding student for the past year. He was a work-based uh, work learning student in high school, worked with a local construction firm, Carroll Daniel Construction. Uh, if you drive around Northeast Georgia, you'll see a blue, blue, blue fencing everywhere. So he worked there and, and found his passion. He really wanted to be in the construction business. So he entered into their apprenticeship program that Lanier Tech partners with, and we provide the related technical instruction so in his two-year apprenticeship with, uh, with Carol Daniel, he will also earn his associate degree in construction management. So just an example of someone who had a, a non-traditional look at school after high school, and Lanier Tech had a program to meet that need. This is Ebony Crump. She's got a, she's got a story probably would trump most of our stories here. She was displaced by Hur Hurricane Katrina. So she was living in New Orleans, Katrina hit, and she relocated to Georgia and was so inspired by the emergency management services that she had the opportunity to watch, help the community and, and help them with their trans, transition. She knew from that day, from a very, very early age, that she wanted to be in some type of emergency services. So she is now a graduate of our fire science technology uh, program. Uh, she was a gold finalist. She gave a speech at a luncheon and had two job offers after, after that speech. This is Caleb Doerr, who took a very traditional way out of high school and earned a bachelor's degree and a master's degree at a, a, a higher institution of education and was doing photography and was making some a good salary, making good, good money, but did not, was not fulfilled. The job he was doing was not fulfilling his passion, and he was watching racing uh, 
on the weekends and thought, goodness, that's, that's what I want to be in. So he, he quit his job, came back to Lanier Tech in our motor sports vehicle technology program, and now every weekend he's fulfilling his dream. He's at, he's at a racetrack somewhere helping some team prepare and, and race uh, for that weekend. So again, this student was at a different place than the other two, but Lanier Tech had an opportunity or we had a pathway for this student. And those were all in our academic programs. This is Farrah Smith. In high school, as, as a teenager, Farrah was diagnosed with a, a very rare form of cancer that took her out of high school. So that took away her opportunity to, to graduate with her class. But while she was in the, the, the health system and being uh, treated for her cancer, which included several surgeries, she got to observe the surgical technicians. And that's her dream is to become a surgical technician and then see where that takes her in life. Well, obviously you have to start with that high school credential. And so she came to Lanier Tech. We had the program in place for her. You'll notice she's our 2020 Eagle Award. Eagle is uh, exceptional adult Georgian in literacy education. So that's like our star student for our adult ed uh, program. So there's our uh, uh, story for our adult ed program. If I had 45 minutes, I could tell you 20 more stories. Do not get uh, between, Gen let Jennifer Parker get between you and the restroom talking about success stories, because she's got, she's got hundreds of them. The other place that we could do this work, again, is through our economic development. So we worked with a local high school, it was Gainesville High School, identified five young people who had no, no plans after high school. They were just gonna go to work. Two of them said, I've got a job in a fast food restaurant if I want it. And that was going to be their career plan, is to go to work and see where it took them. So we had this program put together. It's an anhydrous ammonia refrigeration boot camp. Now that may sound complicated. It's not all that complicated. Uh, the food that, that we eat typically travels about 1,500 miles on average. Very often it's either frozen or cooled with a refrigerant called anhydrous ammonia. Very, very efficient way to, uh, to cool and, and freeze foods. So we put together a, a boot camp, five weeks, 200 hours. These five students earned seven industry credentials. We taught technical skills and workplace skills. Remember Dr. Jacobs said how important those workplace skills are. We used to call them soft skills, but that's not right. They're the hard skills. You know, it's the technical skills are the easier to, to transfer. All five students completed they all five gained employment within two weeks of completion at one company. This company was, was so impressed with the training that these young people had, this one company hired them all. And of course, this was without any college debt. There was a grant that funded this one. So some strategic partners, and I, I'm gonna steal a little of your thunder, Dr. Brown, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cue you up. So obviously our strategic partners, Lumpkin County School System, ha and has been for years and years, but the Lumpkin County College and Career Academy will be a game changer for this community. And this is Lanier Tech's perspective. This is Tim McDonald's per perspective. This will become probably one of your chief economic development tools. When companies come looking at Northeast Georgia, they're looking for workforce. Do you have the skilled workforce that I need? And it really puts Lumpkin County in the driver's seat to determine what kind of economic community you want in Lumpkin County. You put those programs in the College and Career Academy. Lanier Technical College will be a, uh, a key supporter of that. Uh, Troy Lindsay uh, will be serving on the board. He's our dean of our Dawson campus. So we're just so very, very excited about that. And I'll let Dr. Brown polish that off, but, but we're just so excited about that. UNG articulation agreements could not be more proud of the work that Lanier Tech and UNG has done on our articulation agreements. Dr. Jacobs and I have both made a commitment to one another, which is essentially a commitment to this community 
that we're going to have pathways for our students so that no matter where they are and where they start in a higher education career, we've got an end goal for them so that they can go just as far as they want to go and stay in this community. They do not have to leave this community. So Dr. Jacobs, thank you so much. Obviously, Lumpkin Literacy, I want to point out Jeffrey Crydell. He is the director of Lumpkin Literacy, and that's all things literacy to include the early age literacy, but also support of our adult ed uh, program and, and those students who, who want to earn that high school equivalency credential. Uh, Mountain Education Charter School, a partner for us, WorkSource Northeast Georgia and uh, Northeast Georgia Health System. Newest programs, so I'll let you read through those, but a lot of allied health stuff, a lot of uh, technology programs, cyber-related technologies, very similar to what Dr. Jacobs said. That's where the needs are. And so that's the things that we've got going uh, on at Lanier Tech that are new. Uh, apprenticeships is an ongoing opportunity for us where we work with companies to help them develop and customize an apprenticeship program. Lanier Technical College is a uh, registered apprenticeship sponsor through the United States Department of Labor, so we can handle all of that piece of the apprenticeship puzzle. Our mission, workforce development, our tagline, great careers begin here. And if you want to challenge the tagline, take a look at Greg Trammell. Where did you graduate, Greg? Yeah, was that? <laughs> so where did you get the foundation of your career? There you go, exactly. And if you want to challenge it again, well, th is there any other Linear Tech graduates in here? Yes, ma'am. What program? <laughs> it still counts. It prepared you. <laughs> and for the rest of you, I'm just so sad, you know. <laughs> so if there's another question, I'm a graduate of Lanier Technical College, and that's where my career started. The foundation of everything I've done in my career started at Lanier Technical College. So with that, any questions, comments, rebuttals? Dr. Jacobs, any rebuttals? <laughs> again, thank you all so much. We're just so excited, again, about the College and Career Academy. I'm not going to do that. It's my pleasure to introduce Rob Brown. He's our superintendent of our Lumpkin County Schools. He's in his sixth year. If you look at his biography, he has done just about every job in a public school that you could. He's done it for 25 years. What I really have been impressed with in my four years in Lumpkin County is he always looks for ways to innovate and to give us a really a fully developed student. Not only what they do academically, but what they do after school, what their extracurricular activities are. And I think the college and career activities that he's doing right now are going to be a game changer as we move forward in the future. And it's my pleasure to announce him. Come on up, Dr. Brown. Thank you, Chuck. And good afternoon. Um, let me start with something that you've heard several times mentioned already, but I want to point it out specifically, and that's partnerships in this community. And uh, Chuck has been a tremendous partner for our school system. We appreciate you. This guy gives more than anybody I think I've ever known uh, to this community, to our kids, to, to anybody who's in need, he gives. Um, so we appreciate you, Chuck. But also our chamber. Uh, Rob, you do a phenomenal job partnering with us, engaging our students, and helping them understand the role of the chamber and, um, and the work that's going on. So appreciate you guys. Certainly appreciate the partnerships with Lanier Tech and University of North Georgia. In fact, uh, last year we had 81 students who earned uh, dual enrollment credit, and they earned 180 dual enrollment credits last year. And, and uh, by and large, most of those credits were through these two partners right here in our community. So we appreciate that. Um, in, in Lumpkin County Schools, and I'm not going to have a PowerPoint, so I, I would just advise you to uh, avert your eyes somewhere else if you don't want to look at me. I don't blame you. <laughs> our mission is, uh, is pretty simple, too. 
and that's to educate and empower lifelong learners. And we have kids come from a variety of backgrounds and home situations, but our mission is the same for every one of that grant. But it's a great opportunity for our kids to have an articulation with the technical college and to have some foundational skills to go and to continue their education, but to begin earning more and more credits on our campus during the day at our high school. So um, our, all the work that we do in our school system is engulfed in four strategic goal areas. And so I'm just gonna share some information with you today in reference to where we are and how we've done in those strategic goal areas. And our first is student success. And in our last school year, uh, during the pandemic year, we had uh, tremendous success. 85% of our students were in person all year. And by the end of the school year, 95% of our students were being served in a face-to-face -face model in our classrooms. We're very proud of that. There are many school systems who didn't go back to school in this country. And there are several in the state of Georgia who didn't go back until April. And, and that's, uh, in my opinion, uh, just a tragic situation for those kids. Uh, they need to be in school, and I'm very proud that we were able to do that last year. And so you look at that year and you go, well, how did we do? So le let me tell you how we did. Uh, we, we did give state assessments last year, and the results are in, and they were published this week, and now I'm at liberty to share them. So how did we do? We outperformed our RESA, our Regional Education Service Agency, that is the Northeast Georgia Pioneer RESA. That's our comparison group. And that is traditionally the highest performing RESA in the state. And we outperformed our RESA and the state in almost every single grade level and content area on our assessments. Um, you know, that's um, pretty strong, but we didn't just beat the RESA average. We were in the top five of all districts in, in our Pioneer RESA in almost every single grade and every single content area. Phenomenal performance from our staff and the educators that work in our school system that not only face the fear and unknown circumstances of going to school face to face, but thriving under such unusual challenges. We, uh, with our results, we had two schools, Long Branch Elementary and Blackburn Elementary School were both identified as Title I reward schools, which uh, declares that they are among the top 5% of high poverty schools in the state making the most improvements in student performance. An outstanding accomplishment for those schools. Also, for the fourth year in a row last year, we had the highest SAT scores in Pioneer RESA. And again, uh, we remained in the top 20 out of the 181 school systems in the state. So outstanding performance there. Where we, um, I think, wave our flag, the the highest, if you will, is with our graduation rates. And what we've seen in the last several years, it's something for this entire community to be proud of. And graduation is the culminating event for every student, every teacher who's invested in a student along the way from kindergarten through their senior year. And last year, we, uh, for the, well, the, the official rate for this last school year is not out, but for the third year in a row, we will again set the highest graduation rate in the history of Lumpkin County Schools. And we're very proud of that. Um, our students uh, have been incredibly successful in the area of career technical education and within their organizations. Our construction department again completed another house for Habitat for Humanity. And, uh, and that house will be relocated in our community to serve a family again, constructed from the ground up by our students during their school day. Our FBLA, our Future Business Leaders of America, had 30 region competitors, eight state competitors, and one student who qualified for nationals. Skills USA had three region and one state competitor, and these are very competitive student organizations that our kids compete in. In our healthcare uh, HOSA group, we had 22 region, 20 state, and two national competitors. And an FFA, our Future Farmers of America, we had 15 region and five state competitors. In athletics, uh, we had a phenomenal year in a variety 
of aspects. And I want to start with some of our middle school performers. We had um, Nora and Greta Garbuzovas, common spelling. Um, but these young ladies are wrestlers. And, and uh, Nora competed and finished in seventh place in the national tournament. And her sister Greta was the national champion as a seventh grade wrestler. That's pretty impressive, phenomenal young ladies. Our middle school girls tennis were conference champions. Our middle school uh, cross country, boys cross country team were conference and state champions. At the high school, our literary team was region champions. The one act team were region champions and state champions. The high school literary team, region champions. Uh, I'm sorry, girls basketball, golly, what a fun run that was last year. And hopefully many of you got to come and, and experience some of that. Our young ladies were region champions and made it to the state final four, and that was a, an incredible experience for them. Girls soccer region champions, girls volleyball region champions, girls tennis region champions. Um, Laney Gentry, a two, 2021 graduate, was identified as a Georgia scholar, a very prestigious recognition. We had Carter Dockery and A.J. Moss, who uh, qualified for the state fishing tournament. Yes, we offer fishing as a competitive sport for our students. And, and uh, Jake Barrett and Cooper McDonald, two uh, outstanding young fishermen, uh, finished uh, seventh in the nation and tied for seventh in the international competition for fishing. Uh, phenomenal accomplishments. And we had a couple of young ladies, Mercedes Hausman and Grace Jones, who were both uh, track and field champions. Some great things going on athletically. Some other academic uh, standouts. Sam Fustenberg, again, common spelling. Uh, eighth grader from our middle school last year was one of 39 students in the state of Georgia that was chosen for the Summer Science Academy. And Nolan Padgett and William Giles were two of 50 students in the USA chosen for Science and Technology Institute participation. So our kids are going far and out doing amazing things um, and having opportunities to do that. So I'm very proud of the stu student success we've had. Our second strategic goal area is in the area of parent and community engagement. And last year we were recognized by the Georgia School Public Relations Association with a gold award for our efforts to, to reach out in the community. And I'd uh, like to point out Jason Limley is our director of Parent and Community Engagement, if you have any complaints, then please contact him. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we've not had any of those recently. <laughs> no, um, we've done an outstanding job, I believe, in that area, and to be recognized uh, by the Public Relations Association for our efforts is, uh, is a testament to the work that's been going on. We've been recognized in previous years by other organizations. But that one was just this past school year. Our third strategic goal area is professional excellence. And we have some amazing educators in our school system. Uh, the Georgia School Boards Association awarded us with the Leading Edge Award for best practices in supporting uh, new teachers to the field. And that was the second award in two years. Uh, we were one of only two school systems in the state that's been recognized both years with this award. The Georgia Association of School Personnel named us as the best in class for uh, school systems our size and awarded us with the Platinum Award of Excellence for Teacher Retention, something that we've had a very strong focused effort on. Our uh, Associate Superintendent and Head of Human Resources, Ms. Sharon Head, leads that and, and uh, has tremendous support from Ms. Carrie Whitmire, who is counting COVID cases right now. So. We, uh, she is our uh, director of student support and not, not able to be with us right now because she does handle all those COVID cases that are reported each day. And that, that's a tremendous challenge and burden. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, um, but something that's very important. And then the final uh, uh, couple pieces in our professional excellence is we just recently, just last week, we had six of our educators to receive certification in computer science, which is a new venture for us. Hopefully we'll be able to build some foundational skills so kids can go 
the UNG or Linear Tech and continue on in the field, in a field like cybersecurity or one of those fields that we don't know um, exists yet. So we're excited that we have staff members who are now certified to serve in that role. And last year, we were the recipient of the Georgia Charter System Foundation for Leadership Development. And uh, we were the, the only winner of that award last year, so we're very proud of that work. In the area of strategic goal area, uh, operational and organizational excellence, talk to you a little bit about the progress that we're making. We've just recently, and, and our uh, director of technology, Mr. Sean Mullins is here, he and his team have deployed 1,550 Chromebooks in the last month. They've installed over 100 clear touch panels in our classrooms and uh, overseen the installation of 15 classroom audio and video systems and a um, intercom system at Lumpkin County Middle School, which continues to be the gift that keeps on giving. So at Blackburn, we installed Blackburn Elementary School. We installed new playground equipment at Long Branch. We um, are in the process of completing a project out there to add parking and get more cars off of the road out there when we have events or just during parent pickup to create a safer environment for everyone. Uh, we've replaced all the furniture at Lo Long Branch Elementary School. We replaced all the lighting. We've replaced playground equipment, and we made some much needed improvements to the sewer system and partnered with another great partner in our county government uh, with uh, going on to the county water system out there so we no longer have to take care and treat our own water. At Lumpkin County Elementary School, uh, in, the, in town, we did nothing because as most of you know, we are in the process of, of building a new elementary school, which we hope to, to open in the fall of 23. And we have a great partnership up there on that complex with our county commissioners, where we can partner together using that property and share some cost and provide uh, opportunities that, that this community doesn't have right now. So very excited about that. At the middle school, we completed several classroom renovations of labs, including special education and family consumer sciences, and uh, replaced several HVAC units. At our high school, replaced the roof, replaced all the outdoor HVAC systems, renovated the front office and the guidance office, constructed a pole barn at the ag facility, and made numerous improvements at the athletic facilities. And, uh, and also, uh, just a couple weeks ago, we put 24 brand new school buses on the road. And so that's a, a tremendous challenge for us, and we we're able to do that. And most importantly, we've done most of that, almost all of it, with East Bloss dollars. We've had some state support on several items, but none of your local tax dollars went to those projects. Those were your pennies that you're given in the store, and we appreciate that. And all that was under the direction of Mr. Greg Trammell, who you heard Tim reference a minute ago. Greg is a phenomenal um, employee for us and, and certainly would be nothing without Linear Tech training him up. So good job. <laughs> uh -huh. So uh, we did start school a couple weeks ago, and we've had an incredible start. And as we expected, uh, you know, we're still facing some of the COVID challenges. We will continue to uh, monitor the situation every single day. We do not anticipate any sort of mask mandate in our buildings. Uh, we continue to monitor and, and to recommend and try to encourage our students to wear them. Uh, we do have a modified quarantine allowance that the Department of Public Health has given us where we can allow students to quarantine Healthy asymptomatic students can now quarantine after exposure if they wear a mask in the building uh, as a precaution. So we're excited that we have that allowance. Last year we quarantined over 900 students with only seven of them ever showing a positive case. So essentially we, we were quarantined a lot of healthy kids and, and having them stay at home. So I'm glad the Department of Public Health has changed their position on that. We do not have a full-time virtual option this year. Our teachers did a great job of shifting gears and, and to do that, provide that service for our kids last year, but that's not our, our mode of instruction. That's not what we've trained our staff to do. That's not what our, our colleges have prepared our teachers to teach in, and, and so we appreciate them doing it in a pandemic year, 
and we're most excited to be back to full-time face-to-face. We will uh, continue to disinfect our buildings and buses every day. We feel like that help, helped a lot with not just COVID, but also with strep and flu spreading in our buildings. So anything we can do to continue to, to uh, keep germ and viral spread minimized, we'll continue to do that. Um, as mentioned, we'll continue to share our data each week with regard to our COVID numbers. We may go to a multi, uh, multiple uh, posting of that information. Uh, most importantly, we're going to continue to monitor this Delta variant, and we know that it's spreading more quickly than we experienced last year, but we also have uh, sufficient data to, to make us believe it's not affecting our children nearly as much as it is the older population with regard to sickness and illness. Most of our students have experienced some uh, sniffles or low-grade fevers and some with a cough. So our primary objective will remain the, sa the same, and that is keeping our students safe every single day. Uh, we're much more informed now about the impact of COVID than we were a year ago. So we're very excited, and we're going to continue to manage the challenges as they come our way. And, uh, and most importantly, we're going to remain flexible, and we're going to adjust as the conditions change, and we're going to address our needs from week to week instead of saying, here's how it's going to be forever. So we're, we're off to a great start this year, and, uh, and we appreciate your continued support. Anyone have any questions? Yes, sir. Um, you know, COVID, you seem like you got that managed and under control, but when you think about the world we live in, terrorist, terrorist threats in schools, it's still very real. We haven't had any recently, but what are you doing in that regard? Do you, do you have programs in place that our kids taught what to do in the case of the terrorist threat? Is your staff properly trained? Are you still going through the most? Yeah, so a couple things that come to mind real quick, Johnny, and thank you for the question. Um, you know, our our safety focus over the last 12 months has really been more focused on the virus, but we also know that there are other threats that, that could harm our children every single day. A couple years ago now, we implemented a system where on every one of our badges, we have an emergency response button. So anywhere on campus, any of our employees can hit that button three times and get help from from uh, other individuals in the building, including a school resource officer or a school nurse or an administrator. If they continue to hit that button, it triggers an alarm with 911. And so there's, there's no delay in response. Immediately, sheriff's de uh, deputies are deployed, ambulances are headed that way. And so we have that, the capacity to get help immediately when needed. In a mo more proactive step in trying to control access into our buildings, we also went to an electronic badge system. As you can imagine in a school system uh, with 560 employees, there are a lot of keys floating around. And so we have uh, switched to an electronic badge system where if we lose a key or, or if, if we lose an employee, we can disconnect their, their access immediately. So controlling that and funneling traffic all in through the front doors uh, is uh, we changed that a couple years ago. That's made a tremendous difference for us to manage our visitors coming in. Um, you know, always having conversations about what else and what if. And so we're never finished in that area. And, and uh, you know, one of our big fears right now, and we'll be going here in a couple weeks to a, a training session on cybersecurity. Several school systems in the state of Georgia last year were they had their, uh, their information breached, and it was a pretty costly process for them to, uh, to, to get their information back. And so it's important for us to protect the information of our students and to keep all the employment information that we keep electronically safe and secure. So, thank you. Yes, ma'am. You recently you guys have hired two mental health crisis mm -hmm. experts on the Mm -hmm. um, could you explain a little bit more about what that program's goal is, and are you going to continue to partner with Georgia Hope? Right. Absolutely. Yes and yes. So, so we, um, we have great partners with Georgia Hope, and they've done a great job. What we've experienced the last several years, as sad as it may be, it's real. Our children are facing unprecedented uh, mental health challenges. 
Our suicide rates, especially up in this North Georgia region, have been through the roof, and it's alarming when you really look at it, at what's going on. We were very fortunate, and we used our CARES money to add some additional staff to provide for those, those needs of our kids. And, and to be honest with you, our guidance counselors in our schools mostly are trained to be school guidance counselors. They're not trained to be mental health professionals. It's a different uh, background and a different mindset, and they've done a great job bridging that gap, but we're excited to have some people now who are specifically trained and skilled to serve our kids in that capacity each day. Um, but with Georgia Hope, we, are, we continue to have a great partnership there, and we'll continue it. So thank you. Excellent. All right. So another one of our great partners is going to speak next, and, and I just want to say Dr. Lovell is is a great friend and and people think about Lumpkin County School System and Mountain Ed and, and I want to talk about your program we have a great partnership in service to our kids and uh, it's no mystery that um, that Mountain Ed uh, operates within uh, one of our school buildings and they're a great partner in doing that and they're a great service to this community and so I just want to highlight that partnership there thank you appreciate it Our last speaker today is Dr. Wayne Lovell, and uh, he was a teacher in White County for 18 years, and he's been with the Mountain Education Charter High School where he's worked in numerous capacities before becoming the superintendent in 16 years. I also want to thank him for his service as a brigade chaplain with the Georgia Army National Guard and for his service in Afghanistan with all that being on the news lately. And I'd also like to thank everybody in the audience we have a strong military community. A lot of people have served, and I want to thank everybody in this community who served our country. And I, I'm really sorry for the really difficult situation we're seeing in Afghanistan, but your service is appreciated, and I want to thank you. Dr. Lovell. Well, thank you very much, Rob, to the chamber. It is an honor to be here, and we really appreciate the opportunity to come and speak. And, you know, I think if you think about a theme that has uh, come across as we've been talking, it's about partnerships. And Mountain Ed would not be here, I would not be here without the partnerships. We're a system collaborative school. We partner with schools across North Georgia. Uh, Dr. Brown, again, and you know, to repay that favor, I, I wouldn't be where I am today professionally and personally without his mentorship. He's a governing board member for Mountain Ed, and for the past six years, he's helped sharpen the saw. We are a much, much more effective organization because of his contributions. And we see that reflected in this area and at the Lumpkin site in particular. Uh, to give you a little background on, on our program, last time I talked to you, we had 18 locations. We had two sites in Forsyth, and they opened up a college career academy, and we ended up consolidating the two sites that we had in Forsyth into one. So now we have 17 different school systems that we're working with across North, North Georgia. With that being said, we've, we're serving around 2,500 students actively uh, throughout the year. Now, I would t tell you that at any given point, uh, that would be what we're funded at. And we will probably serve twice that many students in a given year. The population we serve, uh, they're on an unnatural trajectory. It is not where we want most of our children to be. You know, we we want to be that first choice for a second chance. And so the students that we want to serve are those that are somewhat wounded, if you can kind of think of that, traumatized. Uh, whatever, for whatever reason, that traditional pathway hasn't worked out. Now, there are occasions we have the outliers, we have a student that will come to us that for what they want to get ahead and they're fast tracking, but they have a lot more support at home. They have a lot more support within the community. The bread and butter for Mountain Ed is that student that for whatever reason has kind of fallen off the normal track. And I, and I, I say this um, and not, not as a slight to my family, but you know, I, I graduated high school with Chris Dockery. And uh, hey, yeah, right. <laughs> Shortly, right? But, you know, my dad never finished high school. And so I know the difference it makes 
of having that high school degree, being that, that diploma, you know, and, and speaking with the military nowadays, with, without that high school diploma or a GED, GED with some post-secondary pieces, you're not even getting in the military. And so we like to see ourselves as somewhat of a force multiplier. And those partnerships that we talked about, they're vitally important. It's not just enough at this point for a student to finish high school, but they need to be connected to post-secondary. We need to prepare them for the workforce. I really like that about the workforce development piece because that's where we're having to put as much as we can to focus the students, those skills that they need to be successful. Uh, we, we spoke with one of our board members uh, last year, and he talked about the workforce in North Georgia. And we have a group from a, basically from that high school age up to 40 that are missing because there's something that they've, they've gotten a little bit off track with. And those employability skills, those workforce skills, they're, they're missing. And so we're trying to address that. Uh, that high school diploma, again, that's the first step. And from Mountain Ed's perspective, it doesn't matter if they walk across the stage with Mountain Ed or if they walk across the stage at Lumpkin County High School. It is important that those students graduate. What's making us different, I think that self-paced piece, as you mentioned, we, we meet the student where they are. And we give a lot of choice. And the students that we serve, they need that opportunity to have that flexibility. Uh, we abide by the open enrollment regulations that the state have. Student comes in, if they're ninth grade eligible, we, we take the student. We're self-paced. They can come in at any point during the year and pick up and start. And some students, it takes a little bit longer. You know, some come in and they get focused and they have the support systems that are there. And you know, we have mentors for every student. We have counseling staff, social workers, graduation coaches. We put a lot of focus on those student support elements because we feel like that's what we can add that's value added that we could probably do a little bit more of than what they probably receive somewhere else and they probably need more of it to re-engage in that pathway. The blended learning, the curriculum we're using, it, it is online. And, and going back, and I'll speak to the COVID response in just a moment, but the students we serve, they need face-to-face. -face. And you know, I, I cannot stress that enough. The students we serve need face-to-face. -face. Now the online option and the virtual formats that came out was a response to COVID. We've been able to make a lot of lemonade this year. And we've been successful, but we could have been more successful with face-to-face. -face. And so everything that we're doing is working to get those students re-engaged. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we'll serve twice as many students in a given year that we're funded for. Because once they've quit school and they've walked away from that traditional program, it's harder to re-engage that student, and it, but it's easier for them to walk away. And throughout the year, they will continue to walk away. And many times our staff will, you know, they'll get a little discouraged because they'll recognize that we, we probably value their education more than they do. And we just have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing until that light bulb comes on and they realize I've got to have that high school education. A majority of the students we serve are already a year behind their cohort. And there are many that are two years and three years behind. And if they, don't, if they will keep coming, we'll keep serving and we'll keep pushing. And many times it takes that break where they've walked away from a traditional school, they've walked away from Mountain Ed, and then life hits them pretty hard, and they realize that, that education is important, and that that's the first step to everything else that they need to do in life. And so we keep pushing that, and we have folks that are doing that on a day-to-day -day basis. It's an evening program. You know, sometimes we get labeled an alternative school, but I think a better term would just be non-traditional. So we're a non-traditional approach. And so it's open enrollment. It's also open attendance. You come when you can. If you got a job and you can't come this week, then come next week. Uh, we've done some things to add some support in the morning. So from 10 to 2, we have folks that can help the students if they can get online somewhere and they can start doing some work. If they can come in in the evening. Again, everything is geared to getting those students back on site. The social emotional learning piece. We realize that there's something amiss. And when I stepped into this role as superintendent for Mountain Ed, it was, there's a lot of challenges working with the at-risk population and trying to keep them engaged and keep them coming because there's so many distractors. 
you know, you know, it, sometimes it's the, it's the workforce. You know, they can go get a job, and they can be making money. You know, we had a student um, last year had less than a credit left, and they would be a high school graduate. But they had gotten a job working as assistant manager at a little small independent grocery store. And we could not get the student to come back. And we sent everybody out talking and talking. Finally, you know, we got, we got a hold of him. And we said, hey, can you just come in and let's finish? Well, he had got a pay raise and he was making $10 an hour. And this young man said, I make more than my mom and dad. I, I don't need a high school diploma. And we ended up having to go to the, school, to the, to the little grocery store and talking to the owner. And they helped us to encourage him to finish. And within a month, he had his diploma. He probably doesn't realize what he just did, but it will pay off. There will be a return on that investment. But that's the mentality that so many times we're working with. And we've got to do something to address this workforce skills. And so we, we have developed our own curriculum. It's very research-based, but I'm telling you that when, when Dr. Brown talked about the mental health piece, you know, that was something that really challenged us with the number of suicides that we were looking at with the population we serve. And through the support of the governing board, we were able to bring someone online just to really help us specifically address the suicide rate with the student population that we're serving. And then that morphed into developing a social emotional learning program. Now then, every counselor that we have every social worker, they're required to go through a suicide intervention and prevention program. If you work for Mountain Ed, you're gonna to have to go through another suicide awareness program. The mental health issue is major, and we recognize that, and I would say too that the governing board allowed us to hire an LPC this past year, and now we have a licensed professional counselor on staff to help us support those students that are most in need. Some good things that came out and, and this is just from, uh, if you look at the data, almost 5,000 graduates since we came online. We had 360 graduates last year. And I will tell you, by and large, those students would have never completed high school had it not been for Mountain Ed and for this, the staff that continue to work with them on a nightly basis. Our response here, you know, we're system collaboratives. And so what we're going to do in Lumpkin is what Dr. Brown does with Lumpkin County. What we do in White County will be what the superintendent of White County does. We will reflect what they're doing with their response to make sure, because we're sharing their facilities, and we want to make sure we're completely in alignment with our system collaboratives. Uh, we were able to get some grants and provide some hot spots for the students that wanted to continue to work that didn't have that Wi-Fi access. Our class sizes, of course, you know, students come and go throughout the evening. Uh, you know, we open from four to nine. And so, you know, some students will come in and they'll work for a couple hours and then they'll take off or some will stay all night. So we have, we have smaller class sizes typically. But one of the major things that came out of this was our, our resupply. And so we put a team together to work on those students that were having to attend Mountain Ed through a remote virtual format. And in doing that, we recognized that we could, we could do a lot of this much, much better. So we put a committee together to look at what we were doing and looking at the lessons we were learning throughout the year, doing impact checks on a monthly basis. And as we did that, we developed a program that I think in the end will, will serve our students much, much better. And so right now we probably have, I think it's like 600 roughly, yeah, 600 roughly involved in that online learning. But it's a blended model they're required to come on campus. And if they don't make progress, then they lose the opportunity to work virtually. And our staff then go out and pull them back in and work with them face to face. Um, again, I would like to see that number much, much lower because again, face to face is what works best with the students that are most at risk. But that gives us an opportunity to serve some students that whether it's hospital homebound, whether they have some behaviors, if they're incarcerated. We've been able to leverage this in, in a lot of different ways to serve the students across North Georgia. We're also working on a new learning management system that really focuses on the relevance piece. 
You know, we, we've spent a lot of money with that online product like Pearson's product or Odysseyware, the different providers that are out there. Uh, we sat back last year and started looking and I had a personnel person look through and for those of you that are not aware, we, we work uh, roughly a, a thousand employees across North Georgia. The majority of those are part-time. Some of them are working for Lumpkin County or White County school systems. And then in that, we have a lot of retired in the community that are coming and working for us. So we, we, our personnel folks looked and they pulled the data. We had over 18,000 years of just educational experience in Mountain Ed. And we've been working to leverage that to develop our own curriculum. That's number one, it's relevant to the students we're serving. And number two, it has the rigor and is aligned with the Georgia standards. And so they're doing a great job. I know speaking about the end of course test that we would offer those metrics that the state's measuring, uh, we too outperform the state average. And that's our comparison group. We have a statewide attendance zone. So our, our staff is working hard. It's being demonstrated in what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, by next year, we'll have our own learning management system that uh, I think will, will better support the students we serve and it'll be more relevant to the students. The future, you know, as I was speaking earlier, I had a mentor once say, tall grass gets mowed. We, we got on the radar this year with the General Assembly. And Senate Bill, Senate Bill 153 uh, was something that uh, caught us a little bit off guard. Uh, for since 2013, we had been a charter school under the State Charter School Commission. In July of this year, we have gone back under the DOE as a state special school. The, the big concern there is the funding issue. Uh, we continue with the current funding mechanism until uh, July of 2023. A committee has been established to look at the funding on how do they want to fund the schools that are reaching out to do that credit recovery or dropout recovery across the state. Uh, so that, that committee has been stood up now in the House and they'll be looking at that. Uh, you know, we're trying just to get our, our story out, uh, the work that we do and how, how we do it and asking them to come into the sites. With that being said, if you have not had the opportunity, please take that opportunity to go to the Lumpkin site. You know, we have two fantastic site directors there, John McCreary and Susan Burrell. The staff there is amazing. This, this site in Lumpkin County was the site of the year for Mountain Ed. And so it's, it's an amazing, they had over, over 22 graduates, I think this year. So out of that 360 system-wide, 22 came from this community. And so uh, on a given night, you know, they're there Monday through Thursday, you know, reach out to them, go in and see the work that's taking place. That being said, hey, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I appreciate the partnerships that we have. And, you know, my, my commitment is to continue to work on those partnerships and to provide a better option for that second chance student, regardless where they are. Um, any questions? Thanks, sir. Uh, before I close uh, the program here, I forgot to do something at the beginning. I wanted to introduce our new county manager, Alan Hours. And although he's, he's been in the community a little while, I wanted to also introduce Lieutenant Colonel Chris Green, who's the battalion commander of the 5th Ranger Training Battalion. If Chris tells you any stories about me from our 3rd Regiment Battalion days, they are all untrue. <laughs> uh, I want to thank our presenting sponsor, Northside Hospital, our gold sponsor, Truist, and our bronze sponsor, University of North Georgia. Thank you for everyone for attending. Thank you to our speakers. If our speakers would come up afterwards so we can take a photo, I'd appreciate it. And everyone have a good day.